We're here at CBS 2016 in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by Katerina Stenson, who is team leader for Lara. Katerina, thank you very much for being with us in the studio today. Thank you. Now, you're here as one of the young innovators. You've been brought together here to uh, essentially showcase your, your ideas, uh, technological ideas that are essentially helping towards socio-economic development. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about Lara and, and what it's all about. Yes, of course. So we want to give a chance to education to the kids who are not accessing schools today. It's about 50 million kids around the globe who can't access schools. And we are building an educational app that can be run on simple uh, mobile devices um, with a focus on uh, these particular children trying to make something that works for them. Uh, and it's basic skills, basic reading, writing and math skills that we focus on. And it's also an open source project, so we want to involve people globally in, in extending and improving and also uh, adapting to local context and local culture. And what age group are you aiming this at? Uh, it's mainly 7 to 10 year olds, 6 to 10 year olds. Right, okay, great. And what kind of feedback have you had on it so far? Um, so we are still in a quite early phase. We had a first, uh, first version ready in July and we've been testing it. Uh, with children in Tanzania and we got very good feedback uh, but a lot of things of course that we have to improve on um, and here at CBS I've been talking to people and it's been very positive feedback I must say I'm really um, really happy about it and it feels like we're on the right track. Tanzania I mean, has still got a, a good educational system but uh, you're talking about children who can't access education yes. where, where, where are the, they, these concentrated mainly? So it's a, it's Quite a lot of them are here in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, maybe not in, in Nairobi particularly, but um, in parts of sub-Saharan Africa. There are also parts of, uh, um, what's it called, like parts of Asia or Middle East, where, for example, girls are not allowed to go to school. There are also uh, refugees around the world. We we are very aware of the crisis with Syria and a lot of refugees um, who are not accessing school. Uh, so these are also, t are also target groups for us. Actually, 50% of uh, children who are not in school live in conflict-affected areas or are on the run or in refugee camps. And how will this reading, writing, arithmetic, how will that be taught exactly? So we are uh, combining, we're trying to combine knowledge from expert and from experience. Um, so we're, it's a bit of a challenge to to develop for, uh, for this target group. For, for example, we can't, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a big chance that they don't have access to literate adults to help them. So it has to be very intuitive and it has to be um, self-sustained. Uh, we can't have any text instructions because they're learning to read and so on. So, but we, we have an explorative approach uh, where we let them kind of explore the app. But we also have some, uh, some aspects of, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, um, progress, so that when you progress you get access to new content as well. But uh, in general we're trying to base it on um, experience and research and what has been proved to work. And then we are, the app has kind of a modular structure so there are different options so it's also um, a chance for the child to try out what they like and test different things. And it's in English, is it? Um, the first versions are in English and Swahili, uh, but we are planning adoption for Somalia uh, quite soon. And also uh, we have a collaboration with an organization in El Salvador, which will translate to Spanish for Latin America. Uh, and we're also looking at translating to Arabic quite soon. Thanks very much for being in the studio. Thank you.